so yes, uh, we go into the main chords, and these are the chords. Uh, I'll play the whole group of uh, of sounds together, and then I'll just like play one by one. All right, so uh, there are a couple of very interesting things in uh, in this uh, chords. So the first uh, thing um, I'm gonna go through is obviously the whole the whole channel, uh, the whole group. Um, so it goes through a bus compressor, uh, which is the SSL. Uh, then he has a filter for a couple of uh, little tricks that I did. Then uh, very simple reverb, then a compressor that is uh, triggered by the drums. So um, you can see here, if I unmute the drums for a second. You can see that the kick triggers the compressor and side chains basically the whole uh, chord stack and you know, it's a trap kick the rhythm is not always the same so uh, you always want to have the kick that triggers the compressor then after that we have um, we have a UAD SSL uh, I am gonna do a tutorial I am gonna do a review on the mix of this song uh, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth into what I've done here but basically uh, what I've been doing lately is um, all the main groups in my songs, like the drums, the chords, uh, the bass, they all have this SSL uh, channel strip. Uh, it's obviously It obviously has different settings, it's not the same all the time, but um, it's always this channel strip. And the reason is because I really, really, really like the sound of it. It sounds like an SSL. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not paid to say that, but it really sounds super, super, super well. Um, and so the fact that I put the same plugin at the end of every uh, chain of the group sort of makes it very consistent in terms of coloration and sound. And this is why I do it. Uh, but anyway, um, so we have this sound, which is the main sound, uh, and it's actually split in left and right. Um, just to sort of make it a little bit more stereo. It might be slightly different uh, in settings. Now I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, all of these sounds, once again, if you want them, they are from my pack. Uh, these are from my uh, pack, The Future. So this is the massive sound set. Um, and all right, so this is, these are the main chords. Um, and what really makes the whole thing special here is this um, reverse reverb. It gives it a lot of continuity uh, and it gives it a lot of flow and a lot of bounce. Uh, and once again, if you if you hear it without, it's it's very choppy. It doesn't I don't know it doesn't flow well. There are a couple ways to do this. Obviously, the most common one is get the note that you want, uh, run it through a big reverb, export the whole thing, take the file, reverse the file, and you get something that sounds like this. It's exactly what I've done with the piano that we've seen before. Uh, but here I did something slightly different and it's something that is very easy and very cool to do with live. I'm not sure Logic can do that. I mean, you can probably do it, but it's it's Logic, so it's probably a pain in the butt to do it. Uh, so what I've done is I took the original MIDI, so this one. And what I've done is I opened the clip you uh, hit CMD and A to select 
all of the MIDI notes. And then you click over here, reverse. And what happens is you basically reverse the uh, MIDI sequence. So once that's done, uh, I render the file and I imported it into a different channel. And now, and what you get is this. So once you have this, what you do is re reverse it. So what you end up with is the exact same uh, MIDI that is playing the main uh, part, but with reversed notes. So this is how it sounds. So once that's done, you simply pick the notes that you want and you just layer them there. And this is what happens. And this is a pretty neat trick that you should try because it's awesome. I always do it in my song. It's very, very quick and handy to do all those uh, reverse sound that complete the whole um, melodies and stuff. I always do it. Uh, now there is another layer here from uh, Massive and it's still from my uh, sound sets because once again it was supposed to be the, uh, the demo. This is something like very sort of high and noisy to sort of give that that sound to the to the layers. And then there is this part. So if you see here, the first part of the lead has those reverse notes. And then the second part, uh, sorry, the first part of the drop has those reverse notes. And then the second part of the drop has something slightly different, which is this. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, so the sound itself, it's something uh, very simple once again from uh, Massive. If you have the sound set and you just want to see which presets I used, that's the one. So this is the sound. Uh, obviously there's an OTT and some EQ to remove the lows and give some um, mids. And here you see there is, there's the same compressor, even if it's within the bus that's being already compressed, but uh, I don't know why it did that, but it probably sounded okay, so that's why it's there. Uh, and then there's this thing. So there's the auto pan that is doing this wobbly, uh, typically future bass kind of stuff. And the difference here is that it's not static. Uh, it keeps on moving. So. Actually, yes, auto pan. Let's bring up the automation. So here you can see, these are the automation that sort of move the whole sequence. And uh, uh, over here, there is some uh, pretty cool stuff that I'm not sure can be heard within, like in the actual song, which is this filter, this sort of swiping. It sounds really good it, when, when the whole um, stack is playing. So, um, what do we learn from this? One of the most important things in music is sort of keep things interesting. So the reason why I 
split this in two parts is because those gaps that you could hear in the first part of the drop were filled by the reverse uh, lead. It sounded great and all, but then I was like, okay, it might be a little bit boring if the second part of the drop does the same thing. And so I sort of wanted to spice things up and that's why I uh, completely changed whatever was filling those gaps over here. So here are the gaps. And if you notice, the gaps is where uh, the uh, rate changes. So you have the space to actually make something happen and that's why I automate the rate in those parts. So if you can, you can hear here. So in this part, there's the, the automation on the filter. Here it gets faster, here it gets faster. So it keeps things interesting. And also you have to um, consider the fact that in this first part of the drop, there is a lead playing. And then in this part of the drop, there is the voice playing. So sort of keep things interesting. This uh, left a little bit more space to the vocal. While here, uh, this reverb sound, this reverse sound, sort of interacted better with the lead. And so it's always stuff that you have to sort of consider when you are making uh, music. The second drop is exactly the same. Uh, and the third drop is slightly different. You can see that the MIDI is way busier in the third drop as opposed to uh, in the third drop as opposed to the second and the first. So what happens is basically the notes um, they're just more notes. So here how it sounds. Sort of like since it's the last drop, I wanted to just have all the energy just explode in the last part of the drop. Uh, it's, it's obviously the, the last drop. So all the energy that you have left, uh, people already sort of dance through the first drop and the second drop. And if the third drop is exactly the same, people are going to be tired. So you need to have all the energy that they have left. You need to take all that energy and sort of like get them to say, okay, there's so much energy here. I need to dance even more. So that's sort of like the DJ side of me talking uh, when I make music. You always want to have the last drop to have more energy compared to the first one because it needs to push even harder than the first one. Uh, 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 uh. All right, so there's a pretty cool thing that happens over here as well, which is something that very, very few people heard. A couple did though, and they really liked it, which is uh, this trick over here. What's happening here is the pen is going first left and right. So the first, this note, this hit goes uh, all the way to the right. This hit goes all the way to the left and then it goes faster. So you get this slow pan and then fast pan. And then there's uh, this one that has um, an automated auto pan once again. It's sort of like pretty similar to the space wave effect that I did with the piano. Basically an auto pan that goes from very fast rate all the way down to slow. Uh, there is a filter somewhere. So yeah, basically uh, all the reverb that's left in this part uh, gets filtered. So if you hear, if I'm playing, there's nothing because there's no reverb from the uh, previous hits, but if I play the note before. And what this is, is the auto filter and that uh, wobbly sound that you hear is from the same, um, it's from the same auto pen on the previous uh, layer. So uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. Nothing too crazy, just uh, some presets and some like chain and some effects that people wouldn't normally hear in the whole song. But yeah, this is basically the whole melodic part uh, of this remix. All the sounds are available 
on standalone-music.com if you like them, uh, both the symphony sound and all the massive sound that you heard here, as well as the get low sound.